Hello, welcome to Rough Cut Film Review. This is a review of Beasts of the Southern Wilds. So, this has been running in some of the, you know, absolutely major Oscar categories, uh, and particularly the the incredibly young protagonist. Uh, oh gosh, I'm going to have a bash at pronouncing this. Quivenshani Wallace. Uh, from now on, I'll just call her Wallace. I, as I understand it, she is the youngest girl to be nominated for Best Female Lead at the Oscars, and absolutely, you know, quite rightly so. So, this is uh, written and directed by Ben Zeitlin. Um, he's new to me, I don't recognise him. Quick look on IMDb, and it, it doesn't really shed more light on him, so I'm assuming he's new to, to a number of people. So, Beast of the Southern Wild, plot-wise, and this will sound strange, we're in the bayou, um, to me, it seems fairly ambiguous where, the, where they are. I've read online that apparently it is supposed to be somewhere outside of New Orleans um, that's not protected by the levee system. Um, but to me, it's fairly mythical, and I prefer the ambiguity. I didn't notice when watching the film that they did actually explicitly say where they were. You get a sense of that. People are dirty and poor. It's you know living sort of squalor, but you know there's black and white people there getting along side by side. They get drunk, they catch a lot of catfish, uh, and, you know, they just sort of live, um, you know, I suppose as, as, as people lived for, for thousands of years, really, by, by the side of the sea and just getting by on ramshackle, improvised craft. Um, yeah, so we know that there are some external pressures on the community there. There's there's sort of the implication that they've been warned they need to move, they need to get out of there because it, it isn't safe. They are absolutely adamant this is their community, that's where they live, this is their life, they are not going anywhere and they're not afraid. We see, with sort of long panning shots, we see that they are close to some, you know, some pretty massive sea defences. Crucially, they're on the wrong side of it. And in, in the distance, we can see, you know, smokestacks and, and, and sort of massive manufacturing works or heavy industry or whatever it is, which has absolutely no bearing on the community itself which i think is called the bathtub or something like that so introduce into this world uh the little girl who is known as hush puppy um which i think is actually some southern american food i think anyway it doesn't really matter um, and her dad is raising her the mother is nowhere to be seen the two have a fairly fractious relationship and the dad's priority is to raise Hush Puppy to be both physically and mentally strong. He is himself strong and people look up to him in the community, which is incredibly close. However, we see early on um, that, you know, there's there's hints that his health may not be as good as it might be for a man of his age. They are, I mean, from particularly from Wallace, the, the, the little girl, I mean, the, her performance is absolutely staggering. The, the dad is very good as well. But when you're next to so, someone so young doing such a remarkable job, you know, it's you sort of unfortunately, he, he sort of pales in comparison, really, even though he's doing a perfectly great job. Um, you know, there's lots of scenes of them throwing things at each other and, uh, you know, sort of um, you know, lots of tantrums and smashing their meager possessions around the place. Um, the film takes a little while to get going i mean fundamentally if you sort of rolled you uh, oh hang on sort of not quite finished with the plot now hush puppy and her dad are there what starts to happen is the ice caps start to melt and not only does the the sea level rise and the world around them become more hostile the melting ice caps also release these ancient mythical prehistoric pre prehistoric animals that legend has it said used to dominate men when uh, you know dominate man and it used to be the top of the top of the tree uh back when men lived in cave caves i think they're called the onyx or something like this so they're running amok the sea level's rising and there's lots of external pressure on this community so i mean if you sort of roll your eyes at the idea of that um, then you're, you're probably best to stay clear. I don't think, if, if you don't like the idea of that, I don't think this is going to change your mind. The film, having said that, the film is really well shot by uh, Zeitlin, I think he's called the director. He was, I mean, quite rightly Oscar nominated, although, to be fair, I, I thought that the fact that Tarantino was nominated for Django Unchained, I thought that was ridiculous. I don't know whether it's, I mean, I know it's not the Golden Globes, but whether there was a bit of nepotism going on there at the Oscars, because... <laughs> 
I thought that film was very poorly directed. Well, not very poorly directed, but anyway, check my review for that. Um, Beast of the Southern Wild. So it does take a while to get going, but that's not to say I didn't enjoy it because I did, although I can completely understand why others wouldn't enjoy it. Um, now, I mean, it's been the, the sort of the darling of the Sundance Film Festival this year. And that, I, I, from the film itself, I can understand that because it's exactly the sort of film that they really like at the Sundance Film Festival. It's different, it's whimsical, it's full of sort of wonder. Um, but, and, and also sort of with it with an underlying toughness as well, actually. But um, I don't understand how Fox Searchlight, which is presumably a subsidiary of Fox, is classified as an independent film. But it is, apparently. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me, I don't know. If you just open up a subsidiary of a massive film house and then suddenly that becomes an independent film, I, I don't know. I don't know whether they do their business completely externally of Fox and raise revenue however else, but to me that's not an independent film. I, I think they're sort of missing the point and the spirit of what an independent film is all about. But there we go. So it's really well crafted, brilliantly played, um, but it is a ponderous head-in-the-clouds kind of parable as I say, you know, if you if you like the sound of it, I, I think you'll you'll get a lot out of it. But if you think you're going to find it very difficult to get over the fact that it's ancient creatures being released by you know polar ice caps melting or whatever that you know, then you're really going to struggle, particularly because it takes a while to get going. But yep, I enjoyed it. Um, you know, I I mean, I don't think it's going to be one of the great films but it's a it's, it's certainly a good film and and um, if Wallace can uh, can put in a, a performance similar to this then um, you know the sky's the limit for her quite frankly kind regards Christopher Thomas